Hey, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Let There Be Talk. Today is Monday, August 24th, and this episode is brought to you by Earthquaker Devices. Yes! If you play guitar, bass, keyboards, whatever, you're a singer, anything, you're going to need some stomp boxes, some foot pedals, and Earthquaker Devices makes the best in the biz from Akron, Ohio, the land of Devo. Go to Earthquaker Devices and pick your poison. They got all kinds of amazing pedals. Not only that, but they look fucking cool, too. That way, when people are in the front row looking down at your pedals, you'll even look cool with your pedals, which is hard to do. Some pedals just look dumb and ugly. These are awesome looking, awesome sounded, handmade. Get yourself something cool like a tentacle. Or maybe a Earthquaker, the Warden, or a Sound Shank. A Sound Shank. That sounds pornographic. Hey, baby, here's my Sound Shank. <laughs> Rock and roll foot stomp pedals. I love them. Earthquaker devices. They are the King Kong sponsor for almost two years now. Get yourself a pedal, visit them at earthquakerdevices.com, email them, tell them you heard it right here on Let There Be Talk, and they're very nice people. They will hook you up with a sweet deal. All the pedals are pretty damn reasonable. 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 See, that's a pedal. Man, that's a delay pedal. Reasonable. Yo, yo, yo. Anyway, earthquakerdevices.com. Let's get into the episode. Uh, First of all, I want to say thank you to all the emails and tweets I got over the last week over the Devo episode. Unbelievable. I can't believe how many people love that episode. Um, It was one of my top five of all time to do, of course. And part two is coming in the next few weeks. Uh, It was just great to uh, see all the uh, people that were like, wow, I only knew Devo for maybe Whip It or something. Thanks for turning me on to it. Which I love. That's what I love about this podcast, I think, the most is, um, you know, of course you might have tuned in because uh, I love rock or heavy metal, but there's way more out there than that, man. And, you know, as much as I love rock or heavy metal, I love uh, different styles of music just as much especially singer-songwriter and uh, alt-country, which uh, I can't even tell you how much I love that. At the end of the day, it really comes down to a fucking kick-ass song, a song that'll stick with you for a lifetime, that you hear anywhere, somewhere, walking, talking, rocking, whatever you're doing, Starbucks, wherever you're at, an airplane, uh, fucking shopping in some store and a song comes on and it, tr- it stops you in your tracks. That's a fucking song. One that takes you back to the day you heard it or whatever. The neighborhood you grew up in. Old friends, old girlfriend, breakups. Songs, man. I can't tell you how much I love songs. And to get a good song, to write a good song is fucking... I, I can't even tell you how hard that is. 1%. Half of 1% probably. I don't know. Not 1%. I don't even know the count of who could write a good song. You know? But I'll tell you what. I put on Neil Young's On the Beach or Tonight's the Night. I'll lose my fucking mind. You know? Bruce Springsteen. uh, The Eagles. I remember one of the first records I ever bought was Don McLean's Bye Bye Miss American Pie. It was a 45. It had a red, white, and blue thumb on it, like a hitchhiking thumb. I love that song. Carol King, I said it over and over. Tapestry record. Absolutely, I think, uh, resets my brain when I'm getting completely frazzled in the world. Whatever I'm doing, I come home, put that on. And it uh, gets me back into the slot. 
on the slot track. Remember those? AFX, was that them? Slot tracks? Eee, those little cars. <laughs> I loved those, man, when I was young. You just fucking put the car on the track and race. How simple is that? Way pre-video game. Old man talking right now. Old man, take a look at me now. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, James Taylor. All that stuff. Just amazing, amazing songs. It's funny how you could just hear a song and completely put you right back into a great mood. My guest today, he is an amazing songwriter. And uh, I'm fucking man enough to admit it now. When I was younger and this guy blew into San Fran, I admit it. I was jealous. Heard a lot of stuff. Jackie Green, Jackie Green, Jackie Green. And after a while, you're like, fuck. But that was just me being an idiot, being jealous, just blocking it like, nah, I ain't down. That shit you do. That's stuff you do in life. It's so fucking weird. I don't know why you do it. I don't know why I did it. It probably goes back to some fucking only child shit. As much as I like being an only child, you know, you got some fucking broken antidotes in your mind. But last week or maybe two weeks ago, I went and saw Jackie Green. At the Troubadour. I've seen Jackie Green a few times. I saw him last year. Me and Biddlecombe went and saw him at the Canyon Club. Uh, I saw him play with the Black Crows, you know. But I got to say, two weeks ago, and I think not only being some jealous idiot younger, but also my brain was probably ready for Jackie Green. Like it was for the dead a few months back. Or whenever you finally let a band in. You know, like, oh, shit, I hated Bruce Springsteen growing up. I'll tell you what, I've talked about it many a times. And then, boom, I see him at the shoreline at the bridge benefit, and he does the Ghost of Tom Joad record, and my whole fucking life changes. Thank God I didn't like all music at the very beginning. Imagine if you just loved everything growing up. You would have nothing now. I wouldn't have Pink Floyd. You know, young growing up, fuck Pink Floyd, stoner rock. Fucking stoners. <laughs> now, Pink Floyd, every other day here at the house. And punk rock. You know, like I said, I watched that, uh, the Sonic Highways and uh, girls doing the punk rock episode in D.C. And fuck, boom, I'm on a punk rock roll. You know, what I'm saying is, well, basically what I'm saying is fucking Jackie Green was on fire at the Troubadour. And uh, I went by myself. I sat front row balcony and I took it in. And I was like, this guy can fucking sing. He can write a song. He can play guitar. He can play keyboards. I mean, this guy's the real deal. His new record, Back to Birth, came out on Friday. And it is incredible. The song on the intro here was Now I Can See for Miles. Uh, it's the second song in the record. I love this record. I've been playing it all weekend. The King is Dead is fantastic. Uh, Trust Somebody, awesome ballad. I'm a sucker for ballads. Jackie Green, I love you, man. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you for the rest of my life, man. You know? Because I know you're going to keep putting records out. And I'm going to keep going. And uh, thank you. For doing the episode, dude. You're a great man. Also, all the stuff you did with Trigger Hippie. Check that out uh, last year. Uh, pretty much, there it is. You know? If you don't like something, give it another chance. Or try it at another time in your life. Remember when you first drank Jack Daniels? You're like, <laughs> and a year later, you were addicted to it? Well, there you go. That's going to be... Uh, Anything in your life. Go out and try shit. You're here once. Before I get to Jackie uh, shows this week, I'll be at the Hollywood Improv doing the world famous Juice show at 10 p.m. I'm fired up. It's the second time I've ever done this show. It's always stacked with uh, killers. So come out to that. Also, Thursday night, I will be at the Hollywood Improv at 8 p.m. And, um, oh, 
Jim Florentine and I got another distortion show September 9th at the uh, Comedy Store Belly Room, 8 p.m. Get your tickets, please, soon for that, because it will sell out. September 9th, Belly Room, Jim Florentine and I, and a secret guest. And Sacramento, coming your way September 10th through the 13th with Ian Edwards. That's going to be fucking great. I love all you guys, and I can't thank you enough for leaving the reviews. Keep leaving the reviews and donations. Wow, I've gotten some great donations over the last few weeks. Um, Thank you. Email me at deandelray at yahoo.com. Uh, talk to me, say hi on Twitter, Instagram, light the candles. Here he is, Jackie Green. All right, here we are. Another episode of Left to Be Talk. We've got a great guest today, Mr. Jackie Green. What How is up? You? What is up? Fuck, been trying to get you for like a year now. No, come on, at least three. Yeah, three. That's true. <laughs> that is true, right? I think so, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. Last time... I saw you was out at Canyon Club. Oh yeah, and yeah, we were gonna yeah, yeah. do it there, and then it was yeah. just too late and shit. It was like, yeah, it was just weird, sort of like a, it was a weird place anyway. Yeah, but, but, I mean, there was too many people. There was, too, was a party now, going on. Yeah, and now we're at the we're at the Troop, which is a totally normal place. Yeah, this is a, a perfect <laughs> place to interview. Actually, did you ever see the Eagles documentary? No. God, you haven't seen that? Wait, what, what, isn't there like five of them? Well, it's three hours. Okay. And there's uh, one, two, and three. Uh, but the the history of this place is fucking mind-boggling. Sure, yeah. You know, I mean, you're talking about back then, um, you have basically this like kind of like a jamboree night. Mm-hmm. Like, like, let's say it's Monday, I don't know. And right. guys would come down, and it'd be like Jackson Brown. Right, yeah. It'd be Linda Ronstadt. Van Morrison, and they would all get up and jam. That's unbelievable. Yeah, and the yeah. Eagles kind of became, you know, like this. That's where they kind of formed right in here. I didn't know that. Yeah, pretty know. insane. I know man. that uh, they had I, that famous one of the famous uh, uh, recordings of Donny Hathaway live is from the Troubadour. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I I met Pete Townsend right in this dressing room we're at, and uh, that was unbelievable. Cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's a uh, it's a it's an iconic room. I wonder how many how much body fluid is on is on the yeah. It's got to be a lot. Well, and the cocaine. Couch, the couch you're sitting on actually right now, dude. Well, yeah, it's just semen couch and coke. I know. Do you like it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's. Uh, this is a, a a funny thing. I grew. Uh, I was in San Francisco. I grew up Bay Area and uh, playing music all my life. And it seemed kind of like out of nowhere in the '90s, you arrive. Well, it probably would have been the late '90s, early 2000s. I remember. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you. It, we can jump, jump forward a little bit. The first time we met, you might not remember. The first time you and I met, we met. You were emceeing for the Mother Hips Halloween. Ha- uh, no, uh, um, uh, uh, Christmas shows. Oh. at the Great American Music Hall. Yeah, oh, was like, you were playing keyboards. Yeah, something. It was like 2004, maybe or two. Right. It was, it was a while ago. And I thought to myself, the first time I met you, I thought that you were a crazy person. <laughs> yeah, well, I, you, you I nailed you were, it. I thought you were insane. I thought Tim just hired a crazy person to MC his show. Okay, that's that's what we're dealing with here. That's where it's because <laughs> I I was pretty mellow by that time. You were mellow. Yeah, that yeah. Was mellow. I and, don't know. This seems like Sam Fran. These things hit. Like I remember when Brendan Benson hit. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know where all of a sudden it's like this guy and and boom, the whole town is on it and it's up and running. You know, mm-hmm. bottom of the hill. And it felt like that a little bit with you. It was just like all of a sudden you were there, you know. I guess so. I don't know. I, I is I, if that's true, then then God bless it. Because I, I I don't I don't really know, man. I just showed up and started playing in San Francisco because there were more places. Because I'm from Sacramento, and there was more places to play in San Francisco. And you know, Sacramento is just you know it's like an hour hour and a half yeah, right. away. So um, I just and oh, actually, you know what it was? You know, San Francisco K Fog was the first radio station to, to play me. Sacramento wouldn't even play me. So So what, a demo or your No, just my first record. They started they were they would play it like on their morning right. show, you know, and like and you know, we started getting gigs around San Francisco because of that. And it's like we, you know, could barely get a gig in our own hometown. So now how do you how do you even get this going? Because it's like uh, all of a sudden you're in town, you got a record and uh, I mean I played Sacramento a lot, you know, press club yeah. and, and all that, and and, right. and I knew Nate, who's in yeah. your band now, yeah. and Sweet Vine and everything. Yeah. But I never heard of Jackie Green until you uh, were around the Mother Hips, 
how do you get a record deal out of Sacramento? Are you are you like demoing? Yeah, basically, I made demos, and then you know, and then the you know the the record company that put out my first record was like a small record label in Sacramento. Oh wow! You know, and so. And so from there, like I got a booking agent from there and then they stuck me on some tours with like B.B. King and like, you know, and some because I was playing a lot of blues stuff, you know, back then and Buddy Guy and all that. And then the next thing I know, I'm getting gigs in San Francisco and, you know, and getting gigs, you know, elsewhere. And right. It's like it's sort of just sort of snowballed from from that one that one thing. And I, I can see how it would sort of look like. All of a sudden, you know, if you're living in San Francisco, all of a sudden I show up there, and it is kind of true in a way. Um, but it's it's only because of the of like the infrastructure that was already there in San Francisco, like the radio was playing it. And, yeah, you know, and and you know, knowing Tim and and all those you know San Francisco San Francisco staples, you know, knowing all those cats, you know, right. was kind of the big help. So yeah, K Fog was uh, definitely uh, uh, a major. A major way I found out about newer bands, like, you know, Jayhawks. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're they're sure. playing Whiskey Town, 16 right. Days. Exactly. All that stuff. They were yeah. in Wilco. They played the shit out of them. They had yeah. K-Fog Wilco concerts. And as, as, as lame as radio was, I would find nuggets out of there. I know. K-Fog was pretty cool. Yeah, like they played that, like know. Chuck Prophet. Exactly, Chuck. They played the yep. hips, all exactly, that stuff. Exactly, yeah. So the early stuff, when I first see it, it's pretty heavy Dylan. Yeah, absolutely. And... Um, and how old were you when you did that Dude, record? those first records, I was 21. 21. 21 or 22, yeah, those first records. How do you get into Dylan in that era? Because we're talking like right post-grunge probably. Yeah. Um, well, it's actually kind of, it, it makes a lot of sense if you if you look at it. Because like I'm coming from a, from a perspective of being, and you know, of being in high school, being 15, 16 years old. And, you know, the big thing on, on, pop radio at the time is our boy bands right, right? so you know it's pretty easy to sort of in like, sync that kind yes, of stuff that kind of stuff right. so you're like ah well you know that's what half the kids are listening to i want something else right right so you're thinking you know for me what i what i found is i found old, old blues music i found i turned into like a blues nerd you know i like buddy guy and muddy waters and bbk was that like your dad or your mom or just yeah you? just it was just me finding like old records and old you know stuff in in basements and i actually found a ray charles record and i put that on that was like one of the first things i i got turned on to at a sort of a young age and so from there i sort of uh when i was in high school i sort of discovered this you know around you know 50s 60s 70s music you know and and sort of inevitably you find dylan and you find uh, the almond brothers you find you know stuff like that and then so you know by the time i was out of high school i had this sort of um you know i had this sort of backlog of this of this old sort of hip music, you know, in my in my brain, and and that's just sort of what influenced me, and that's and also, you know, at this actually at the same time, uh, around that time is when that Oh Brother Where Art Thou soundtrack right. came yeah, out, T Bone, yeah, and so that sort of like you know people sort of started paying attention to sort of roots music, you know, again, yeah, yeah. and I was like, well, all this country is great. was yeah. really a hot for it I started mean, happening again, right? fucking so, loved it, you know. You know, so it, it sort of was a good time for, for that small niche, you know. And at New York Times, was it them that mm -hmm. they gave the, the, this classic, <laughs> The Next Dylan? Yeah, they, they said they called me the Prince of Americana or something yeah, like yeah. that. And I, I mean, that's got to blow your fucking head off. You're like a 21-year-old yeah. kid at the, uh, from yeah, SAC. At the time, it was weird, I, you know, because I, I, they, they were at Bonner. Uh, we, it was like our one, our first like big festival gig. It was Bonnaroo. <laughs> And we played Bonnaroo. I don't know. This was probably 2005 at that point. 2004, maybe. Um, yeah, and then we read that. You know, some writer wrote that the next day. And uh, we we're like, you know, the label ran with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <of laughs> that course. got stuck on yeah. everything. Yeah, from, right. You know, now, so. does, does that fuck with your head? How do you keep that together? Because I know if I'm 21 and they're <laughs> calling me, like, you know, the, the next <laughs> Tweety, you know, which right. at the time I was like, well, Tweety's a guy. I would fucking lose my mind, you know? I mean, <laughs> ego-wise, you know what I mean? I Walking around like, fuck, I'm badass. I don't know, man. I just I just never really... I mean, to be, to, I mean, to be fair, like, I've never really... I, I still, to this day, don't really pay that much attention to the kind of things that... That you know, I mean, I, you know, I like if, like anybody else. I feel good when when people are when people you know write nice things about you. But um, at the same time, it's like you know, I mean, your job is to really just go out there and you know and make music and and play shows and like I don't know. I've just never really gotten that sidetracked from that. Yeah. So like I don't know. I just don't. 
I don't know. I, I probably read the New York Times now more as a thirty-something-year-old than I ever. I mean, I never read the fucking New York Times when I was twenty. Yeah, yeah. You know, what I, I mean? love the New York Times. I do now. I do. Yeah, right. You know, what I, I mean? really like, think it's like fucking the last thing in America besides sixty minutes. Yeah, right. That have I you, really grab s- onto. And have you ever seen that New York Times documentary that just came out, like behind the the pages or something? It's no, I gotta see that. It's pretty good. It, it it it. No matter what you think about the Times, like you could you know you can call bullshit on them all you want, but there's there's some. There's some legit stuff, you know, that yeah. it, it, if you see that, you'll have a newfound respect, you know, and it's just like a, it's an institution for sure. Well, I, I always, I do a bit where I say, if you want anybody to believe anything or bullshit you're saying, yeah, right. <laughs> you, you just say like, yeah, man, it turns out cats can ca- uh, cause cancer. And they go, what? And you go, yeah, I read it in the New York Times. Exactly, yeah, right. And then that's just fucking clout. Yeah, yeah. And they go, oh, shit, get rid of the cats. Yeah, they validate everything. Yeah. Like, okay, New York Times. Just if they, whatever you say, just put a New York Times tagline. That's on all it. you got to do, and and, and then people just fucking oh, all right, you know, yeah, right, it's exactly. hilarious. Exactly. So you get the first record out. It's on a small label in Sacramento, and then do the big labels start coming immediately? Well, then I made it. I made a second record, and then then it got wind. Of, Universal Music got wind of it, and then I signed to Verve Forecast, one of their one of their labels. They bought the record, and then that was my first uh, big record deal. And then they, and then they paid for the next two records, and um, then I got dropped from that label. Well, I probably pissed a lot of people off because I was very idealistic at the time. I didn't want to do this, and I didn't want to do that. And I, are you a rigid guy? Like, like I used to be a little more rigid. I'm not, not nearly. I'm not like that at all anymore. I'm like getting too. I'm getting too old for that. But you got to remember, I was 26 or right. 25 or 26 years old. Like I, you know. I thought I thought my way was the only way. You know? Yeah, it's, <laughs> I mean, well, so. I mean, you know, it's it's the it's. I always tell people when they say like, "Oh, this guy sold out" or "That guy sold out" or whatever. I, I'm like Cobain, uh, right. you know, who, who these guys. If you're making music. Uh, you have to get into the machine. Yeah, exactly. Uh, or or else just you wouldn't play on stage. You'd play in your bedroom. Right, exactly. So there's everybody wants to of, get somewhere. Yeah, there's a certain amount of give and take that you have. And I just wasn't given an inch back, you know, back then. But um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it was all it was all good because, you know, that the next record that I had, uh, American Myth record, that had a it had a song on there that that went on that did pretty well at radio across the country and that opened up you know markets for us in like Pittsburgh and places where we've never been right. you know in Ann Arbor Michigan and just sort of weird spots where now we can still go back and play some of those clubs you know and well now you get signed you, you do a record at 21 you're you're called the prince of americana and then by what 26 you're dropped are you are you fucking like whoa what happened i mean cuz yeah, usually I mean, when you get I mean, dropped you're done yeah, well, I, yeah, except for at the same time, the whole business is changing to begin with. Totally. So it's like, you know, it, it's being, you know, being dropped from a label didn't mean you were, you were done. It just mean you had to, you had to find another home. Yeah, and it at meant this you had time to go to now. An in, yeah, and, it and I think with Americana music, too. Yeah, for it's sure. Different it, than, means, it means you had to find a new home for your next record, you know, and like, and I wasn't going to stop making records. So that's what I did. I just went to an indie label and. And which is you know where I'm at now, and and I think that's I think that's the case for a lot of people. You know, yeah. it's like if you're not at a big label selling a ton of records, then they don't really have any time for you. You know, especially nowadays. I mean, it's even harder now. So. Yeah, I mean, like, how could you uh, have like uh, Jackie Green on a big label and think that it's going to uh, like, right. whoa, we're gonna we're gonna sell millions of records? Exactly. I mean, especially now. I mean, it's not you know I'm not on tour with Katy Perry. You know, what I mean, yeah, I, you know, yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm, you. You record, you have like massive knowledge. You had a recording studio in San Francisco with uh, Tim, mm-hmm. right? And you have massive knowledge of, uh, of recording and, and you play a lot of different instruments and stuff. Yeah. Uh, how, do you get, how do you learn all this? You learn it early on or you just like, fuck it, I need to learn how to record my own shit? I think it's a process. I think like, like from a very early age I mean I think it's a natural progression to sort of be interested in recording music once you start writing it because you want to hear yourself you know you're like well what do I sound like so you know I start off with like two little tape decks and bouncing shit back and forth you know and then it turned into well you know I now I have a multi-track machine and then it turned into you know effects and then all of a sudden you start learning about microphones and preamps and the next thing you know you're with your buddy Tim making a studio. <laughs> you know yeah, yeah, just, just throwing money away. <laughs> just throwing right? money away. That's, that's <laughs> no, the next man. thing that happens. Now, you, you, uh, you start playing with the Mother Hips. Do you think this is really kind of where you get your, 
your kind of jam roots from or did you have it before because you know the mother hips is really i yeah. i am now like certified full-blown grateful deadhead you right. know <laughs> I, I call myself a metal deadhead a metal head a, a dead metal head, a dead I metal head yeah. <laughs> yeah but i found it backwards meaning early on mother hips really opened my fucking mind to um like that whole horde era and all that of like whoa you could take music way somewhere else because right. i wasn't on board with the dead because i always thought like sure. ah, trust fund right. you know fans and i need sure, a miracle yeah. and now it's so funny i wish i was there earlier but i found a lot of music from the mother hips yeah, so did I. I mean, I remember seeing the Mother Hips when I was in, you know, when I was in high school, and I was, I think, Shootout was out at the time, and it was sort of, you know, that was on a, a big label, and that was, you know, that was there was they had songs on there that were getting some airplay, and I thought they were like going to be the next, the biggest thing I'd ever seen, you know. Yeah. And I, I mean, there was a, there was definitely a certain sort of jammy element to them, but for me, it was it was really all about the songs that they had, you know. Absolutely. Like they sort of touched me in the same way that like. Like I could listen to Neil Young, or I could listen to you yeah. know, or at the time um, Bob Dylan or anything like that. And I'm like, this is just good to me, you know. Well, I think Shootout they were a totally different band than they are on, uh, you know, uh, the first American record right. or their own record. Right. I mean, yeah. when I first start seeing them, they're straight up like a jam band, totally like but, the Chico days. Yep, yeah. but great songs. Yeah, they weren't like song, uh, yeah. some of the jam bands. You're just like. Where's the fucking songs? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I, I didn't mean, even know they jammed till I saw them. You know, I was yeah. like, oh whoa, it fucking been lost is twenty four minutes. Yeah, sick. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. and I really start to see Chris Robinson coming around, mm -hmm. and and he wants to produce him, and I can see the influence of the hips on on Black Crows. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, yeah. That probably Chris wouldn't cop to, but right. I mean, he's at their shows, and all of a sudden they're jamming the next right. record. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. Amorica. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, I, I think the hips. I think the hips are probably one of the most underrated bands in yeah. our, in our in our time. I think that. I mean, for I mean, for your listeners who don't know them, I mean, we both love them. So yeah, abs definitely fucking absolutely. check them out. And the sad thing is, is those. I don't think you can get those. Well, you might be able to get them online now. Can you yeah. get? I I mean, I still have a copy of Shootout. So I know that they. I know that that record hasn't been available for a long time. But that's easily one of my favorites and uh, their new stuff is is great you know like oh yeah pacific dust i mean was a masterpiece it's unbelievable what's really crazy too is usually with bands they put new records out mm -hmm. 20 years in mm -hmm. you, you barely give it a spin right barely for some reason it's weird right but, yeah but tim's become i mean he's he's become even a better singer than he was which i don't know how it's it's even possible because he was always a great singer, but and he hates his old he hates his voice on those old records. He's yeah, like, man, I hate that shit. I'm like, dude, you sound great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> why well, everybody hates their old shit? Yeah, 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 isn't that hilarious? It's hilarious. But I'm like, dude, you sound great, and those songs are great. And he's like, oh man, I think they suck. I'm like, dude, you're fucking crazy. Yeah, but you know the 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 new stuff is amazing. You know, and he just continues to write great songs, and he's a great singer, and he's just you know you know him. He's an all around good dude. So. Yep, yep. Um, and a survivor. And Those a guys survivor, were fucking yeah. junkies, you know? Fucking survivor, yeah. Like and they, they make it out. They live to tell the tale, you know? Yeah, it's cool. wild. Speaking of that, uh, were you getting any partying going on? Did you get lost a, a little bit while got, you were... I got a little... I, yeah, I got a, I got a little lost, but I never really... I don't think I got as far deep as a lot of a lot of our friends did, you <laughs> yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, I didn't... I, I, I still... I mean, to this day, I you know, I'll smoke a little dope, you know, but I'll get... I'm still on the straight and narrow, you know? Yeah, that's different, part. you know? But yeah. Sacramento, it's got a lot of drugs, man. Does it's it? It's hard to dodge. Man, I don't... I, maybe in your <laughs> time, man, I was... I, I don't... When I was... When I was playing clubs there was just like i mean there was people doing a lot of blow and stuff but that shit never really like did it for me right so, right yeah like, I, I, I don't know i'm just like i'm i'm wired and high strung i can't even have two cups of coffee so like i you yeah know, you wouldn't want me you wouldn't want me on two i think it'd be the opposite for you like me i might, it's I might like fall Ritalin. asleep yeah, right you just turn into this introvert you yeah, know right. you're like hey wait you just did big big pounds of blow and you're yeah. not saying a word you're right like, and you're sleeping yeah <laughs> it's like so, I don't know. I don't want to. I don't, I'm not going to test it anytime soon. You were playing keys with the um, with the mother hips, and uh, and and you play fucking keys great. You know, B three. That shit is hard to play. B three. Uh, you know, uh, Fender Rhodes and all that. Yeah. Um, what 
Were, like was that were you getting off on that like fuck man i'm playing yeah, with, fuck with yeah. the hips i mean like you know like i I've, I've said it for a long time it's they're literally one of my favorite rock bands of all time so it's fucking awesome to just you know to play anything with those guys and just you know at this point now we're all such friends it's just yeah. like it's no big deal but i remember you know first sort of i think it was those first shows that i'm that you and i met at i was like those were some of the first shows that i played with them i was real nervous i was like you know, are they yeah, well, going yeah, yeah. to like anything I do? And Tim's always so supportive. He's like, that was so awesome, man. You know, he's so <laughs> yeah. nice. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, well, you, you brought a lot to the table. You're playing great keys, but you can also sing. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have mad knowledge. And I'm looking at Greg. I'm looking at Greg for the changes. You know, I'm watching his hands, you know, because like, you know, it's just that's sort of in the spirit of sort of jamming. Like we didn't really rehearse anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just like kind of watching old Greg for the changes. Okay, there's an A minor there. Okay, cool. Here we go. You know. Yeah. Now, does this open your door uh, to play with the dead guys, or how does this happen? Actually, the the, the dead the, the dead thing happened at that same year at Bonnaroo. Uh, Phil Lesh was there, and he was, and I guess he saw us play, um, and that's around the same time we had that one song on the radio. So, and I think his his kids may have liked it or something. Somehow he got wind of it. I don't know how he got wind of it, but I literally got a call from him months later. Uh, I don't know how he got my phone number, but I suppose he has his ways. He goes, and he says, Jackie, this is, this is Phil, Phil Lesh. <laughs> and I was like, bullshit. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. This is somebody playing a prank on me. And he wanted, and, but it turned out it was Phil, and he wanted, to, uh, he wanted me to come down to, which is now closed, uh, that studio in, in Sausalito, real famous one. Fleet oh, uh, uh, a rec, uh, record plant? The plant, yeah. Yeah. And at the time, he was working on tr trying to write songs for, for a television show, which never, you know, never materialized, never happened. So I went down there, and you know, we were just sort of fiddling around with some songs. And uh, Were you a deadhead? I wasn't. I, I wasn't at the time. I mean, of course, I knew who he was, and I knew who the Grateful Dead were at the time, but I didn't really know that much about the Grateful Dead. I knew like a f handful of songs. You know, I didn't really... Right, you know, right. That was like me. I knew similar, Truckin', yeah, yeah, exactly. Touch I knew of tru Grey. Yeah, Truckin' and like... Casey Jones. Yeah, you know, and, right. And, you know, so I go down there, and the next thing I know, you know, John Molo, the drummer, shows up, and Larry Campbell shows up, and it, it you know, it, and then the next thing I know, we're playing Grateful Dead songs, and then, like, three days after that, Phil's like, let's tour. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> like, no oh. shit? I'm like, okay. Really? <laughs> so, so you go to write tunes with him for a TV yeah. show. Do you think it's really fake, and he's just seeing how you no, play? No, I think, I think it's legit. I think it, I mean, I just think he has a lot of different musical things that he wants to do and i yeah. think i think he just you know he f he felt he felt compelled to to put a band together you know and and go play some shows maybe he was inspired now and this is phil lesh and friends this is phil lesh and friends so this is 2006 or so now do you does he just throw you hundreds of tunes or he throws me he gives i get stacks of tunes you know he's got a big archive he's got you know he's got tons of you know all this Grateful Dead material, and I just I go through and I'm listening to him, and he's making set lists, and he's and he's letting me choose some things. He's you know he's seen what what I like and what and you know, but at the same time, it's it's you know he he's very good at like saying like I'll tell I'll tell you this like the first time I ever sang Sugary, which is now a song that we do all the time, and well, I love that's it. Dope. You know the first time I ever sang it was I'd never even heard it before. Yeah. It was like, it was some show we were on the road and I goes, Jack, I think I'd like you to sing Sugar Reed tonight. And oh like, no. And I'm like, uh, okay, Phil, I've, I've never heard the song. Oh. You know, he's like, don't worry, you'll be fine. <laughs> don't worry, you'll be fine. <laughs> don't worry, you'll be now, just fine. Now, are you using a teleprompter? Or how no, I just know? have. I just went back to the. I just went back to the dressing room and I listened to it a bunch. I'm like, okay. You know, I charted it out. I wrote it out. I'm like, okay, I think I got it. And, you know, I just had to go for it. I what about the lyrics, though? Well, I had the I printed out the lyrics and well, I had them on my music stand. Just right, so I, gotcha. you know, because yeah, I couldn't yeah. memorize them yeah. yet in like and literally like the pressure of like having to do it that day. So, right. And then we, you know, and it, he was never really like he's never really been a stickler, a stickler for like trying to do things just you know the way the dead did it in 76 he doesn't he was never he never he's like do it right. you know sing it your way you and know. that's got to be a lot of pressure though because these deadheads boy they hit the internet right away and they they're do. like what the fuck's going on they do but at the same time it was sort of like i was put in this unique position of like of like learn of finding my new favorite band in front of everybody else who that's already their favorite band yeah you know yeah. what i mean yeah well, let me go tell them to shut up real quick oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're good. can you hear it yeah we're good uh 
that's interesting because uh, as I start to fall in love with the dead, I'm absolutely obsessed now. You know, like yeah, my buddy's Mark with, Marin, yeah. and he's like, "You're a fucking, you're just a deadhead now." What Mark, happened? You're friends with Mark Marin. Oh, yeah, he plays we, guitar, right? Yeah, we just got off tour together. I was dude, he's awesome. He, he's great. He's man. fucking hilarious. I saw, I've seen his show a few times. It's pretty fucking. Yeah, funny, I was on man. the show last season. Dude, he just had a he had fucking, the president oh, on. the president on today. He's interviewing uh, Keith Richards in New York today. Really? Yeah, one, God one bless on him. one. God bless him. Yeah, so and, not from his garage. Keith won't come to his garage no, but the w- president will <laughs> he's not like that but it's like he's in new york and right. it's like fuck it i'll go out there you know cool. it's like but if yeah. keith was here you know he'd go in there yeah i'd go to the garage yeah, Ob- obama went i heard the- they had snipers on the they did on the neighbor yeah. can you imagine the conversation that you knock on your neighbor's door mark's like oh that's funny he does a like, bit. hey man is that a yeah, does he, he does do that bit. oh man i can imagine he's like Hey, I don't know how to ask you this. Is it cool if we put some snipers on your roof? <laughs> That's what he you know? says. It's so fucking funny, Dude, man. I, I'd it's love so to be fun- that neighbor. You uh, know? Uh, uh, and, and if you've been to his neighborhood, you would be like... He's here in L.A., right? Yeah, and it's so quiet, and there's really? nothing going on, you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, you got snipers on your right. roof and the president. That's hilarious. It's wild. But, uh, you know, I'm finding the dead now, and all of a sudden, it's like, oh, blues for Allah, mm-hmm. you know? Holy shit, this is a record. Oh, dead set. I love right. this record. And, yeah. and all these tunes... So that must be cool. Like you said, you're you're all of a sudden falling in love with a band that you're playing with, man. Yeah, that's exactly. crazy, right? Yeah, it's a very cool. It's a very like I don't know if I could ever duplicate that experience because it's, you know, I mean that's kind of exactly what it was. It's sort of like I'm discovering my new, you know, my new muse basically, like at the same time as as learning it, you know, yeah. and it's sort of and, and in front of thousands of people who have already loved that for for decades. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's really interesting. It's weird, know? right? To, like I think like. Man, what was I fucking doing not listening exactly, to yeah. this? And I remember, like, I, when I was, I saw a Phil Lesh and Friends when I was 18 and doing a tour with, they were doing a tour with Bob Dylan. I went to go see Bob Dylan and I saw Phil Lesh and Friends and I, I didn't, left. <laughs> I didn't even, I didn't even realize what I was, you know, because I had no f- yeah. reference, you know, I had, right. and it's so weird that, like, seven, eight years later, I'm in that band, you know, I'm like, that's, that's weird. Crazy. You now, know? how many dates did you guys do? We did a, we did quite a few. I mean, we did a we did we did a several legs with or we did one sort of long tour with the Allman Brothers. Wow. Where we where we flip flopped every night, which was a lot of fun. That's cool. And you we, got to see like Warren every. Yeah, night. yeah, it was great. We got, and who else was on that run with? Uh, was it uh, in the Phil in the Phil band? It was it was uh, Steve Mollitz played keys. Uh, Steve Moore. Steve Mollitz. Oh, oh, yeah. And I uh, that Dixie Dregs. Steve. And um, uh, uh, um, John Molo played drums, and Larry Campbell. Who's just a badass? Played guitar and like mandolin and like tons. Was of, Larry know. Campbell in Dylan's band? Yeah, he. It's, that's right. He was. He was in Dylan. That's the funny thing. The time when I saw. Yeah. Phil and friends. He was in Dylan. He was in Dylan's band. Yeah. At the time and then, it's it's so weird that we just I was like, hey, who's this tall, handsome dude, scary looking dude playing in Dylan's band? That guy's awesome. And then I'm in a band with him and. Yeah, you know, in Phil's band. And years so later. you're the so singer. Weird. You were the singer. Uh, I sang. I think I probably sang most of the stuff, and then Larry sang a couple. Phil would sing a couple. Then we, everything that had like harmonies and stuff, we'd sing together. You know, this has to be really where you become like a jam king. You well, know? It's de- it definitely was like a crash course in in how in, you know in sort of the how to do that. I mean, Phil is totally fearless. You know, I would I, I was first at, at first really sort of weirded out by the the idea that, you know, he's like, well, why don't we just put the two songs together and jam and how do we get from one song to another and I, you know and I was like Phil how do we do that I don't know how to do it and he's like well we'll figure it out I'm just <laughs> no, like no rehearsal okay. yeah no just, no, just no. we'll figure it out and and he you know he would say you know he would you just have, really have to listen if he starts playing you know we're in B minor or something he starts playing you know in A major or something we just follow him and then and then he ends up in D major which is the key of the next song and we're like okay you yeah. know, and then you now kinda, you know you're there. You kinda, we're we're kind of there, right? You know? And it's just you know the idea of that is, um, you know, it, at the time it was totally foreign to me, totally foreign to me. I'm like that 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 makes you know how do you do that you know? And now I you know it's you know we don't we don't in, in my band we don't do that a whole lot. We sort of we segue things, but not to that degree. But it's definitely sort of opened up like my mind to the possibilities of being able to put together a set. Of music that that works that way, yeah, you know, yeah, and I mean that's I mean Phil's just totally fearless. Like he's just not afraid to to 
to fall flat, you know, like, and it's okay, you know. Yeah. He, he always, he just, he's, he just told me that. He's like, it's okay to take chances. And if, if it you, falls apart, you just, you just roll on. You just roll with it. And sometimes it's awesome. And sometimes, you know, like in order to get those moments, you have to be, be able to f- fall flat on your ass like half the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah I think so, it's like with uh, being a comedian when you're doing crowd work. Right. You're or if ri- you're doing new shit. Yeah. Right? New shit. Yeah. And you're just. You're, you're riffing and, and doing new shit. Your mind is on, yeah. and you know at any time, if it completely tanks, you go to trucking. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Which would be my A joke. And right, then, yeah. boom, you've got them right, right yeah, back yeah, in, yeah. you know? Your go-to. Yeah, yeah, Dark Star. Right, you know? yeah. um, this ain't working. Go to Dark Star. <laughs> now, when that ends, are you kind of bummed? Do you th- I mean, because he's doing big gigs. you got to be yep. making some good money. It's good, yeah. Filling the bank account back up. You're on a bus, yep. right? Yep. You guys busting right. around. You're meeting cool people. Yep. And there's, I mean, you're touring with the Almond Brothers at that point. That's awesome. Yeah. Some great shit. Uh, and it ends. Were you bummed or you're just like, that's another chapter in Jackie Well, no, it, it's, I, the thing is, it's never really, it's never really ending. I mean, there's still, Phil Lesh and Friends has always been sort of a rotating cast of characters. I would say that that, those particular, those couple years was a, a solid band and it was a touring band. And now, you know, and you get, you know, the, the guy, you know, the man is 74 years old now. So, like, he, he's going to, uh, he, he probably, and he opened his club, sorry, in, be, in between oh, yeah, those in, times. Oh, yeah, in Fairfax? So, uh, in uh, Mill in, Valley? Uh, 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 San Rafael. Oh, and he's got a club in San Rafael? Yeah, it's in San Rafael, okay. Terrapin Crossroads. And so he's, you know, he's putting a lot of effort into that. And it's, and it's been really sort of wonderful to be able to, to just sort of go down there and play music, you know, play music together in that capacity, in a club capacity where it's, you know, there's not a lot of like stress. There's not a lot yeah. of you know the things that you're just, worried about the hotel. You just go or get off and go home. Yeah, yeah. It's it, and I think that's where you know that's where his heart is is playing is playing live and and to sort of curate his own uh, Phil Lesh and Friends experiences in basically his own living room. I think that's probably a dream come true for him. And I and just saw him awesome. on the last shows. Uh, oh, in Chicago? Yeah, I went to the Santa Clara. Cool. I went to Chicago, the last one. Oh, you did? I did. It was awesome. What? Did he uh, hook you up and you just say... Like, yeah, I went down to the pit there. Yeah, it was It was awesome. Wow. Was awesome. Now, what'd you think of Trey? I thought he was fucking dynamite. I thought it was great. Yeah. I thought the whole thing was wonderful. It was like... I mean, the most amazing thing to me was that there was like... I've never... It was such a huge show. Yeah. Like, I, there were, you know, 70,000 yeah, people huge. or whatever. And then there was like 20,000 people without tickets. <laughs> you know, just like milling around. And I'm just like, there's close to 100,000 people, you know, deadheads here. And and they really did a good job of like... like As far as I know, nobody got hurt. Nobody got harassed. Yeah, it was bad. so nobody, mellow, right? Yeah, you know what I mean? Even like, cop could have been. Yeah, that's what I mean. It yeah. could have been... It could have been horrible, yeah. you know, but it wasn't. It was like it, you know, because I went, I walked through the front door like everybody else, and it was like it was, you know, it was kind of awesome. Yeah, you know, yeah, it like, was. Wow, because we're we got to we're thinking about like back when the dead was really huge and going. Say, you know, seventies all the way up to the eighties, and and even early nineties. Drug use is just going on, and people sure. are fucking bad tripping and everything. Right. But now it's although the world is a little freer, they're also way tighter. And right. in Chicago, sure. so you've yeah. got these hippies walking around and they're right. high, and yeah. and you know, and there's scams going on or whatever. Right. So yeah, it could have been a potential disaster. It could have been, potentially, it could have been catastrophic. But like it, it wasn't. It's like I, however they put that together with the you know the security and the the infrastructure that that brought it all together is was pretty marvelous you yeah know? that dude you live in brooklyn now that mm-hmm. dude that put those on oh, peter yeah yeah he's got the bowling alley yeah, and everything there. Bowl, he's what a genius that yeah, he's, guy he did a great job putting it all together he's i've known him for several years now and he's he's a sweetheart and i know he was really nervous about it oh you gotta be he was he was like shitting bricks about it but i i think i think all in all it, it worked out pretty well yeah so he's got to be pretty proud of that john mayer what do you think of that i, I just i just someone i just did an interview yesterday where somebody just now told I didn't really I didn't really hear about that right. and but the way look the way I I I I think it's fine like I mean they're every you know they're all musicians they want to 
play together. I get What's it. the big deal? You know, I get it's it. Like, yeah. I think it's I think it's great. You know, and like I think it's pretty buff that they can just be like, ah, let's just do Madison Square Garden. No big deal. <laughs> right. You know, like, right. Yeah. I think that's awesome. It seems. Know? I mean, like, and O'Teal's a bad. O'Teal's a badass bass player. Oh no, he's, he's incredible. Bad. He's gonna. Oh he's, yeah. He's. I just don't. And 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 I I try to get on this thing now over the last couple of years. Uh, promote what's great, not mm-hmm. what you hate. Mm-hmm. But on this particular thing, I do not see it. You don't see it. I do not see it, man. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. I'm, I don't really know either way. I just think, you know, I think it's, I don't begrudge anybody for, you know, any, I, I don't either. That they want to do. I don't either. I, mean? I don't either. And I think it's, I, I think, I actually kind of think it'll probably be pretty awesome. You do? I do, yeah. And it, 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 for not the same reasons that maybe like a, a proper Grateful Dead thing would be awesome right, for right. different for different reasons, you know. I think it'd be cool, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's totally valid. And I think it's totally valid to have, you know, Bobby and Mickey and Billy involved in, in something like that. You know yeah. what I mean? I think it's totally cool. I I you know, I, like I said, I'm not bagging on it, but it just seems to me like uh I mean, they've got they had Kim Ock, mm-hmm. you know. They had uh, they had the dude from Dark Star uh, yeah. Orchestra play. Mm-hmm. They had Trey, and when I saw Trey, I felt like fuck. This is feels so good. Yeah, it, it felt, felt so good yeah, to yeah, me, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, You're sure. talking about a guy who is around because of the dead. Yeah, yeah. And then he's in the dead, and you're mm-hmm. just kind of like, wow, like you love him, like what a champion. Yeah, you're rooting for him. I you're really wanted that yeah. to keep going. You know, yeah. not as the Grateful Dead. But yeah. okay, let's do some indoors with him or whatever. Yeah. You know, but I understand Trey's yeah. like, you know, he's got his thing. And but, I mean who know I mean who knows the inner workings of it, but they all they're musicians, they wanna play and you yeah. know, fuck it, they should play. You now know? when you're playing mm. with um when you're playing with uh Phil Lesh, is this where you meet Chris Robinson? How does this Yeah, happen? I met Chris through Phil. Um we met I I can't remember exactly where where we met, but I remember one of the no, I think we actually we actually might have met. We opened for the Black Crows, I think my band be, oh, wow. before that. I can't I can't totally remember, but definitely like a, the friendship uh, was was struck up through the Grateful Dead and through Phil, knowing Phil, and you know playing playing both playing and Phil and friends on various occasions together, um, and then from there. When the when the crows needed a, a guitar player for that tour, they just they just called me and said, "Hey, can you do this? Yeah, this gig. It's going to be a year long." And I was I was sort of freaking out. About it. I was like, "Oh man, it's a long time." You know yeah. what I mean? And but it turned out to be great. You know, it turned out to be a lot of fun for me. Right. And like, you know, I, it was kind of cool to just play guitar, not have to worry about singing and yeah, you know, and and sort of le- and you know, being sort of a, a famously loud rock and roll band for years a lot of fun we you know yeah once again Europe, you once know, again awesome. you're, you're stepping into a band right. like the dead who right. had such an iconic i mean really people are straight up mark ford totally you know yeah. uh, luther did Dude, you know what's funny is yeah. that like we would do these <laughs> we would do these meet and greets oh they call you mark ford <laughs> people oh, thought I, I, I was like i was like did you guys not have the fucking internet for the last 20 years isn't that the worst um, right then is when i know the interview right. is over right you know what i mean because yeah. they're like so mark tell us about your uh I'm sg like, oh, on this boy. tour yeah like what I'm like, I'm like oh boy i'm like i love i love mark ford but he's like 25 years older than me yeah you know yeah, what I mean? yeah, like, yeah 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 it's 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 a it's a wild thing i i humongous i'm a humongous black crows fan mm-hmm. of course and then they had oddly which yeah. is a kind of a, a weird era uh, and then they get Luther. A lot of people mm-hmm. loved Luther. I, I love all. I'm friends with all those guys. I'm yeah, yeah. friends with Luther. I'm friends with Oddly. I don't know Mark, but I'm friends. You know, I imagine I'd probably be friends with him if I knew him. Yeah. Um, so you know, how do you like, approach that? Do you just say like I always look right away at the band when they're playing Wiser Time? Mm-hmm. It seems to be the main tune where you could see the guy's own style. Right. All the other stuff is pretty blues oriented. It's right. bound to count down, you know. Yeah, yeah. But when you get into that intro and it's like, right. you know, yeah, it's yeah. that long thing. You see the guys, what they're going to bring. Yeah, to well, that's the, that's definitely the song where everybody got to stretch out. You know, everybody got an extended solo, and it's, it's sort of for me. Yeah, they didn't they, unless there was something super specific that Chris or Rich wanted me to do. They pretty much let me. They're like, you know, they would say, "This is where you take a solo," 
doesn't have to be like Mark did. It doesn't have to be like anybody did. I'm like, okay, great. Because oh, wow, yeah. I can't really, yeah. I'm not going to try and cop lick for lick. You know, that's not my thing anyways. And I wouldn't be able to do it anyways. I yeah. have to sort of do it my own way. And um, and so, you know, that was like, that that made it, that made the job a lot lot easier. You know, but that, you know, with that said, there's definitely like some some riffs and stuff that you ha- I had to learn. You some know? key stuff. Some, some, yeah, some specific things. But for the most part, it was, you know, Chris would point, you know, and be like, Go, you know, I'm like okay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, uh, like, like when you're. This is like really your first time playing like full blown loud rock. The la- you, that's definitely the loudest band I've ever. Played. Right. Yeah, so like, now, how do you figure that out, like head wise and equipment? Like, oh yeah. shit, should I go Les Paul? Should I go SG? Well, what I didn't, Marshalls. I, I just brought. Yeah, totally. I, what I brought was I had in my possession a couple 412 cabinets which I've never used before because I've never been in a situation that required it and when time came time to load the gear I just brought everything yeah and and as we were playing gigs the first gig I mean the first run of shows were in were in England and we didn't really have our own we had our own amps but we didn't have our own I don't think we had our own uh, like Back stage line. carpets and, oh, yeah. and like and front of house stuff so everything was really sort of like it sounded it was actually didn't sound that good on stage. I was just like, oh shit, this is going to be real hard because it was real loud. But yeah. when we got back to the States, it mellowed out a little bit. It was still loud, but it was like a lot more, I could hear a lot better. And then I sort of got to dial in what guitars I thought would be good for each song. And mainly it had to do with what Rich wasn't playing. So like right. if Rich was going to be playing single coils, I'd try to play humbuckers. And, you know, just because that's sort of my aesthetic as a guitar player, I like the two guitars to be different you know like yeah. if they're two of this two of too close to the same tone i think it's yeah it's, it's a little muddy same. it's a yeah. little it's same. Just, too yeah. much mids if it's yeah, humbuckers. It's too, yeah exactly so if, and if i had you know i had a strat out there if he was playing you know most of the time if he was playing like a, something with humbuckers or something i'd play a strat and i had something with p90s in it you know we just sort of i just look at rich and look at what he's got on his you know what he's used to doing and i would just work around that yeah you know you really have to learn how to play loud because it's such a weird thing. Your Different. guitar is fucking loud. It's so loud. And, and, and you got to learn how to play with dynamics. And, yeah. and, the, and when you hit it, it's like... Dude, it, but it's... I, I tell you this, it was so... We, we did a thing in, uh, uh, in, in the UK where we played in front of Bruce Springsteen. And there was like, you know, like 60,000 Bruce Springsteen fans out there. And, you know, that, that was one of the gigs where I used both my... 100 watt amps you know and it wow. was just like yeah and just to be on a stage like that and just like hit just ginormous chords you know at you know on like hotel illness or something like yeah. that it's just like it feels so good you know because when you're on it's one thing when you're inside then it's real loud but if you're outside it kind of you know yeah. you can kind of get away with it yeah. it's not too painful yeah it just goes out yeah it goes out also on the tour you did was really uh black crows from Amorica all the way up to when you played were really turned into a uh, kind of a jam band. Some of the songs were real long, yeah. but when you played, they were tightened back down, except for a few like "My Morning Song" or sure. "Wiser Time" and stuff. Yeah. But y- you could tell that uh, I mean, you know, basically Robinson is full blown, uh, you know, dead now. He's moving to oh, the yeah, Bay he, Area. He's, he's always. Oh, is he? I oh, didn't know that. That's the word I heard. Yeah, I he heard d- he's looking for he's a house. He loves up there. the Grateful Dead. He would. He would listen to. <laughs> He, he's a huge Grateful Dead fan. He would just listen to the Grateful Dead after every show, which is cool because, I mean, that's something that we all agree on. You yeah, know what I mean? Totally. It's yeah. totally fine. Um, but he, yeah, totally. He loves the dead. Yeah. And I remember he, gave, he actually gave me, it's very cool of him, he gave me his, he had like this fake leather vest. Actually, he actually gave me some cool clothes. He had some this fake leather vest from when they opened for the Dead, like in the early '90s, and he had inside were still his backstage stickies from the Grateful Dead show, and I I super glued him in there, so I still got. Wow, it. I, really? I wear it every once in a while. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> funny. There's probably some fucking toot in there yeah, too. Yeah, and right, some like one of the, I'm like what's in that? You want to wear this, that thing custom? Yeah, what's in the? Don't yeah, don't take this thing <laughs> to the airport. Like, what's in this pocket here, dude? Oh yeah. my god, you know? Yeah, yeah. He get, I, he gave me he gave me his he had these suede uh uh these suede bell bottoms that were tied dyed tie dyed suede bell bottoms that he gave to me and I still don't have the balls to wear them yeah. <laughs> to but they I mean that dude was so skinny I mean he's a foot taller than me but he I probably weigh more than he does yeah you know? yeah yeah you know yeah, I mean? yeah. so it, it's just 
It's he was really cool to me, you know. He's very. Cool. Could you tell it was over when you were on that tour? No, I don't think that anybody. I don't think that you know when that that announcement came out. I mean, we. I I, I knew about it, but I don't that you know the things between you know between Rich, Chris, and Steve is, you know, quite. It's not really any of my business. Of course and, not. And um, I, you know, the the tour itself I thought was great. You know, I have to say that from everything that I've heard about, you know. The, the the horror stories that I've heard, none of none of that stuff happened when we yeah. were, we were out there. It seemed like everybody was having a good time and and the music was good and and um, we were get, everybody was getting along. It felt like shows were packed and, and the shows were the shows were packed and we were having fun and it was like you know so if that's the way that it it it's going to go out then it it you know but I, I'm I'm proud to be a part of that you know yeah yeah so, but in terms of like does, did anybody know it was over I don't know you know I'm sort of like I was. You know, I'm I was a hired guy. You know, I don't yeah. I'm not really that hip to the sort of the inner the inner workings. You know, I'm friends with everybody, but they you know those those guys have known each other since they were kids. Yeah. You know, yeah, fifteen, sixteen. Yeah, exactly. And I'm just you know I'm half their age. You know, I so get it. Yeah, I, get I don't it. really know, but I I just like to think that we had a really good time out there, and it was you know it was a hell of a lot of fun for me. So yeah, yeah. I mean, you know. I mean, look at the look at the groups you've you've got to play with. Uh, you know, you got to play with Phil, mm -hmm. your own band, Mother Hips, Black Crows. Yeah. All you know, awesome. All awesome. All and awesome. also, so uh, the audiences are your dream audience as a, a, a musician. Yeah. You know, I think, you know, it's bands like Wilco, Mother Hips, uh, you know, Black Crows. Yep. They can play forever. For Zero sure. radio yeah. play. Yeah. And that can it bleeds into people coming and seeing you yeah and i think that's the genius of the americana alt country jam whatever you want whatever to you want to call, call it, it yeah i call it music uh, the last of the music fans yeah the real music fans yeah. uh you want that because you can just play for the rest of your life and they're like sure. oh it was cool we went and saw them and they did a band record this tour. yeah right or yeah. whatever your or whatever yeah your they idea played is. they played some weird pink floyd jam that yeah. was cool you know or whatever yeah, yeah. yeah and that's you know i think that's i think that's the case with bands who are who are real bands you know they just sort of want to get off and they're in 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 however you know they see fit and that might be one day you know in in the crows that might be you know, Chris bringing. I think he wanted he wanted to do medicated goo. Yeah. You know that traffic that traffic bit. And we started doing that. You know, and it was it was a lot of fun. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw him, and they did like the Exile record. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. The, just you know, it's just fun. You yeah, know? Just, it is fun, man. And the crowd all, gets off. That's on all it's it. really about. In, yeah. At the end of the day, right? So you know. So let's uh, talk a little bit about it. your gear. I'm a gearhead. I love gear. You have a Pelham Blue SG. I used to I have do. a 65. What year is that one? That one? The one I have is a 61. 61? Is 60 it really Pelham Blue? Or no, was it? they never. It's been refinished. Yeah, right. So 64 or something is when they start doing Pelham Blue. I, did they? I don't even. I, I know they got refinished sometime in the 70s, which is the only reason I could afford it because it made yeah. about half the price. But everything else is original on it. Actually, that's not true. I changed the tuners on it because the other ones were shot. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got that. And I I got a that's sort of my main guitar and i, I saw you got a flame top les paul i do 59. that's a, new, a newer one yeah a real, i can't obviously i can't that would be yeah, 200 course. grand yeah, 200 grand. One. yeah 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 um and then what do you got 335 i got a three i have two 335s uh which i didn't bring out on this run and i have a i have a good two good strats a good telly I have a great, a really great Les Paul Jr., a 55 Les Paul Jr. I played that with the Crows a lot, with this the one P90 in it. Oh, yeah, yeah, it. yeah. That's yeah, a the, very the rock and roll guitar. Like Tobacco Sunburst. Yeah, sunburst. Tobacco Sunburst. Just a nasty guitar. Yeah. It's just a loud I call those guitar. the rock and roll machine. It's a rock and they roll machine. They really are. They're like the blue collar rock machine. It's all it does. So it does. You, <laughs> you roll, the, you roll yeah. the, the volume down to eight, and yeah. you've got this thing, and then when you go to solo, exactly. you roll it to 10, and totally. it's like, ah! Exactly. That's the rock and roll guitar. Like that's what it does. Yeah, I it's love just... the TV special, the two P nineties. Yeah, Those are awesome. Same kind of thing, you know. Exactly. Same. They've idea. got those big necks. Yeah. And they just fucking rock. They rock and they don't stay in tune too well. They're amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> they got the uh, the shitty wrap around bridge. Yeah, yeah so exactly. The intonation's funky, yeah, exactly. you know, and all that. Totally. Uh, when you're out on tour, do you go gear hunting? I used to, but these days it's kind of like 
you know, with the internet, it's it's kind of like it's just sort of easier to search on the internet. But because the idea of finding sort of that garage sale gem is, I I've ne- that's never happened to me. You've you've heard the yeah, story. That's all. I found gone. a nineteen yeah that's fifty nine three thirty five for four hundred bucks. You yeah. know, it's like oh great yeah. asshole. The you internet know, like, ruined that. It ruined go, that. So hey Jimmy, let's see what we have here. And they go, yeah. oh my god, it's oh, worth my Lord. forty grand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now so, <clears throat> you were living last time I talked to you. I think you were living in Modesto or something, mm. like on a farm. I, I still have the house. It's a, uh, I live in near Lodi. Yeah, which is uh, near, more near Sacramento, uh, and I still have the place. I got a little studio on it. Got a little couple couple acres. Um, it's probably dry as a bone right now. I haven't been back there in a while, but but now I live in Brooklyn. I have yeah, a place in Brooklyn. Are you too. renting out the? Uh, uh, yeah. The, the, and and what made you go to Brooklyn? Well, I got a girl now in Brooklyn. Oh, that, uh, that's yeah, where. Did that's, you meet her on tour? No, I've actually known her for a really long time. I've known her for like ten years, and we've been, um, uh, always been like really good friends, and just sort of now we're both we're both the same age, so we're both at the age where it's, you know, time sort of time to settle down, and so it's worked out really good for me. Yeah, and yeah. It's like she's. Is she from New York? She's from Cleveland. Oh wow! And she's from Cle- and, but she was living in Brooklyn. She, she lives in. She was living in Harlem when I met her. Wow! She's a social worker and she's you know just like salt of the earth, like help. She works with you know homeless, like the home. She works in a homeless outreach program and you know basically gets paid shit to go march up to Harlem every day and yeah. you know and help you know and help people. I love and, Brooklyn. I love Brooklyn too, and, and I love New York. New I just great. don't like winter. Oh man, it was horrible this winter. Yeah, it was, and there was no spring. It was like, it was like there was, it was freezing. That January and this year was brutal. It there. was brutal, and then all of a sudden it was ninety-five degrees. You know, <laughs> it was like there was very a very small window of spring. It was kind of a drag. I love the know? New York women. I like their. <laughs> I, I mean, I just like them better than these Southern California women. Yeah, like some people like that Southern California blonde with the boobs. Oh, and sure, yeah. I yeah. like the uh, New York kind of Sofia Coppola looking right, yeah, girls yeah. rolling around. They're you know, and bust they got, your balls, and they got yeah. really awesome outfits right, on. Sure, yeah, and, and they they're not in the entertainment business. Right, yeah, you know exactly. Right, I mean? yeah. So, the quote yeah. unquote entertainment business. Yeah, right. right yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, so now you're out on the road here. What happened to uh, Trigger Hippie? Well, I just have I just have this record that I've got coming out, and it's just you know it's just we we were, Trigger Hippie. I, what was that song? It was fucking great. Which one? The the one where you and Joan Osborne sang together. Uh, it was a song. I get up in the morning. Oh yeah, oh, that fucking song, that's, dude. Yeah, that, that's a fucking. That's a back in the day. <laughs> that is a K Fog smash. A K Fog smash. Yeah, but, I mean, they would play that thing, and then they would play Train, and That's then hilarious. they would play like fucking Wilco. <laughs> you know what I mean? All three in a row. But yeah, man. It was the those songs when you first hit them, like. Uh, that Jayhawks blue song, you know, yeah. when you first hear it, you go, that's a radio AOL. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, is it AOL? You know, like that, that K fog format right. across America would just yeah. grab it and play oh, like shit a tri- triple a triple a. That's yeah, it. Yeah, a, yeah, for sure. I don't, you know, we, we had a I, trigger hippie's going to still continue uh, without me. I just, I, I have a, this record coming out and I mean, to be, to be honest, it's just where my heart needs to be in just this one spot. And I just don't like, I've done the thing where I've been in a lot of bands as yeah. you know for, and I just, I want to really want to like put my best effort forward for, for this, this thing. So, and they, you know, and I, it, I just sort of, at the end of the day, they wanted, maybe wanted to do some different stuff that I, I, you know, I don't want to do, and I thought it'd be better to sort of remain friends with everybody rather than yeah, yeah. sort of be a drag yeah. for everybody. So now you, you know. wrote that song, right? I do. Did, you yeah. ever think like, "Fuck, I should have kept it for my record"? No, or absolutely, not absolutely part? not, because it was totally meant to be a duet to begin right. with with a okay, woman. Yeah. And when Joan and I sang it together, it was like, "Oh shit, well there it is." And it'll always be that way. It's always going to be a trigger hippie song. Yeah, yeah, and it's so cool. It's almost like a Carol King. Uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, Oh, fuck James, James Taylor. Taylor. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. I mean, the voice is A little together. grittier. <laughs> no, 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 yeah. totally, totally. Yeah. I'm a huge Carole King fan, Me though. too. Fucking Me too, love man. Tapestry. Yeah. I think yeah. it's one of the best That's one records. one of the best records ever made. Ever made. Ever, ever made. made. I go crazy on You Got a Friend. Yeah. I go crazy on... Um, you, you know, oh, uh, feel was, the earth move under my That's feet, a great yeah. one. That's the first. It's weird because they open with a big, I feel the mm-hmm. earth, and then they go right into all. Ballads. Well, then you have natural woman. Yeah, you know, I yeah. mean, Jesus. Yeah, 
Uh, what's that problem? one uh, about moving? Uh, keep, keep. I forget. Oh, it's, uh, um, um, um. Oh God. Yeah. What is it? I love that song. We're uh, gonna sound like a bunch of dorks here. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> where's totally. the Where's the iPhone? So trigger hippie, you're no longer doing that, and uh, and now you have a new record coming out. What's it called? It's called Back to Birth. It's uh, it's coming out in a couple weeks. Actually, it's coming out this month, August twenty first. Um, it's you know, and it's a little bit more. It's a little bit more like it's not. It's not psychedelic. It's like more in that Americana. It's back, back to, to that, like back your to early record Americana vein. Yeah, very right. much so. And there's actually there's a lot more piano on it than. Than normal. I did wrote a lot of songs on piano for that one. So, um, and you know, it's it's been cool because we've been getting some pretty good reception on a lot of the, the new songs. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully it works out. Where'd you record it at? I recorded up in Portland. Steve Berlin from Los Lobos yeah. uh, produced it. Who's who's done a couple of my records, and we, we it was good because we we did it up there when we didn't have a whole lot of time to do it. And so Steve and I already know each other really well. So we sort of just went in and started working like that. We didn't have to like have any meetings or anything, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Any, any bullshit. We just sort of went in and started working and, um, tape you recorded, recorded on tape. To tape yeah. To recorded it to tape and then did the overdubs back at my place, uh, in Lodi and no longer the studio in San Fran, right? No, no. Tim, Tim, Tim moved his stuff to his house and I moved my stuff. When I moved out of the city, I, Right. You know, it, it was, dude. I mean, we we looked into like maybe buying a play a building. It's, you know, impossible. impossible, impossible. Forget it's it. impossible, right? It's impossible. So this, we're like, this San is ridiculous. Francisco is done. It's it, you can't afford anything in that fucking no. town. It's, I was just in Portland, and I love San Francisco. Me too. I say that with love. Fuck I mean, yeah. get your shit together, You're talking man. To me. Yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, I went through the first wave. You could live in an apartment for two seventy five. Right. You could eat a burrito. For three bucks and drink beers for dollar fifty in right. the hate, and yeah. you would be a god. And you could fucking <laughs> hustle that from a couple gigs and right. selling some used clothes at Wasteland, right. and that's how you would survive. <laughs> right. And then the first wave comes through of dot coms in right. ninety six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's gone. The clubs, right. everything's uh, Paradise Lounge, right. DNA Lounge, uh, you know, all that shit. The I Beam, the Night Break, all mm -hmm. that stuff is fucking gone. And now, so then it starts to come back again about uh, maybe five years ago, six years ago, like when you and Tim have a studio and yeah. I'm up there hanging out and I'm going, hey, this feels good again. Yeah. And now it fucking techies take yeah. over. Yeah, it's way too expensive. I mean, by the time I moved out, when I was looking around, I think the median condo price was like $650,000. And I was just like, Jesus. Yeah, and there's guys shooting you know, dope in your yeah, hallway yeah, there. Yeah, I'm like, this, this is not even a place you want to live. I know. Like, how does anybody... 600000 if you've been on the tour. Yeah. Well, I'm on tour all the time, and I'll I'll just... I'll look walk. at look at the houses. I'll look, or whatever. And yeah. it's hilarious. It'll be you can get uh, two of them. Yeah, like <laughs> right. you know, one twenty nine yeah. full blown mansion. You're right. You yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're like in you're in you're in like Tennessee or something. I mean, something like that in Nashville would get you the whole block. Yeah, you know, in East Brooklyn's Nashville. pretty crazy. Too. Brooklyn's crazy too. But I mean, we you know, it's also the sort of the kind of place where you at least for me you don't plan to be forever you just you're gonna rent a place and right. unless you just have a ton, shit ton of dough if yeah. that's the case then who cares but yeah right I, you know i don't so we're, we're renting a place and then you know if we start having a family or something we'll move out or something yeah and live somewhere else did brooklyn influence your uh writing on this record well no because this i just i i'm a new brooklyn i mean i've only lived in brooklyn for since like january wow so this record was already done since then but um I imagine that it's going to influence the next wave of songs. I've started making some songs out there. I started, I gave myself a little apartment studio setup, which consists of a tape recorder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <And a> microphone. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 You know. Wow, man. Well, when's the record come out? It's come August 21st. August 21st. What's it called? It's called Back to Birth. Back to Birth. Yeah. And uh, what label's it on? It's on a label from North Carolina called Yep Rock. Chuck, yeah. Chuck's on that label. Chuck Prophet? Yeah. Oh, wow. I think he is. Or at least he was. Yeah. And yeah. vinyl? Yeah, yeah. We're doing vinyl. We're doing, it, you know, it's, I think they're doing, it's going to be double vinyl because it's kind of long. You got to do vinyl now, yeah. right? You got to do vinyl. It's and the been, only way people buy music. I know. And I've been trying to get, you know, the, the labels on to own the, you know, my my other records to do that. And they they don't want to hear it from me. So, but so we'll, this one will come out on vinyl and we'll hopefully we'll sell a shit ton of them. And is tonight is the first night of your? What's going on? You just starting the tour? We're start. This is we're about halfway through the first leg of the tour. 
Um, tonight, yeah, we're in LA tonight. We were we played the Grammy Museum last night, which was a, which is actually a lot of fun. Like they did a we did an interview like a you know in front of a crowd, and then we played you know a handful of songs. It was sort of real fancy and proper. It was, oh, that's it was actually great. kind of a lot of fun. It was great. Um, I'm doing a show for the Grammys now. Cool. Uh, History of uh, Rock and Comedy Grammys. Awesome. Six episodes. We just shot our first episode. Do you uh, do you look back at a, a record that really was the one? You know, for me. Yeah, to, that got you into music. Oh, absolutely. Probably a handful of them. One of them is definitely is going to be a uh, small change. Tom Waits. Oh, Tom Waits record wow. Yeah. Change. I just saw that on vinyl. I was going to buy it. And it was like That's 45 like, bucks. Is it really? Well, they're hard to get Tom Waits. Really? On vinyl. They're, but they're re is it? They're reissued. Well, though. not the reissue. Oh, like an original. I try to get originals because original? yeah. you don't know who's reissuing them. You get them home and they did That's it off true. a fucking CD. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Um, it'd be cool if Mobile Fidelity did a. Did no, a I I buy all those. Mo, those are great. Mobile oh my Fidelity god! If they did Tom Waits reissues, I, I got I, Desire. Uh, um, and they did a bunch Dylan. of Little Feet stuff. That's so, that's fucking sounds. The great. Dylans are unbelievable. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Tom, definitely Tom small Waits, change. Small change. Ray Charles records. Um, a lot of a lot of blues stuff. A lot of you know some Stone stuff. You know, probably a lot of the same shit that you were into. Yeah, yeah. Kid, are you, know? you are you the uh, Brian Jones era or Mick Taylor or all eras? All eras, dude. It's the Stones. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's you know it's, that fucking it's Sticky like, Fingers record hurts me so hard. It's dude, Sticky Fingers, some girls, some girls, like, even X Black X and Blue, Black and even. Last night we were listening to it, man. Fingerprint file. Fingerprint file. Dude, the, the, I mean, it's the fucking Stones. Man. Yeah. Like, what do you want? You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. I saw yeah. you play uh, last year, and I think, I think out of all your your stuff, the Les Paul was the best tone. Yeah, that's uh, that's what a lot of people say. That's a really good sounding guitar. It really sounded. It's a great. good sounding guitar. Like that that particular one is is for some reason or another, it's just sort of a special guitar. And I don't know if I'll ever get rid of that damn guitar. That thing's. I mean, it's it's heavy and it's. Well, it's actually not that heavy for Les Paul, but it's heavier than yeah than like a you know than the SG. SG or something yeah, like yeah. that. But it's just it sounds bitching. It's just a bad guitar, you know. You got Nate on guitar. Yep, he's and his Strat sounds bad. He's, I've known him for twenty years or yeah. something. I don't know. Uh, did you ever see Sweet Vine? Or were you too I did. young? No, I oh, did. Yeah? yeah, yeah. I think that that record. It's so funny. It's one of my all-time favorite records. Yeah. And no one knows it. They got dropped. It was on right. CBS or whatever. Yeah. And, but I couldn't believe how great that record was. I know. It's so great. And, and Hans, the singer, and yeah. then the drummer wrote the stuff. Yeah. I was just kind of like, <laughs> how great is this yeah, band? It's you know? great, you know? And, and I always like turn people on to it. Like, mm -hmm. oh, check this band out. Can you even get it? You probably get it online, right? Uh, I don't think so. I it's, don't know. It's that, that hard to get. I it. think wow. so. I mean, it was only out for like a couple months, and then they were gone or something, you yeah. know? But I really, yeah, I think you can hear it on uh, YouTube. Yeah, somebody's got to put it up on YouTube. You playing any covers tonight? Yeah, probably. We'll probably do Grateful Dead or two. Oh, what ones? I'm not going to tell Sugar. you. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm going to let you go, man. Yeah. Thank you so yeah, much. Brother. You got a website? JackieGreen.com. And then uh, Twitter? Uh, I do. Jackie Green. And this will be out in two weeks. It'll uh, be out in two weeks. Uh, in two Mondays. How, um, uh, how much more of the tour? Well, this leg, we only got three shows left on this leg. Then we take a break, and then we're out for all of September. So, oh, badass. Come see us in September. All right, there you go. Thank you yeah, so man. much, dude. Thanks, Great brother. to have you on, yeah. man. Rock and roll. I'll yes, see you sir. tonight. There he is, guys. Jackie Green. Thank you.